Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully you are joining me any second now and will be live. If not, this video will be saved and shared, especially on that YouTube page um, at smartreadvice.com. Um, so, hey, this is Rob Rosa, your favorite real estate broker. At least I hope that I am. Listen, I have some information to go over with you today. I have some stats. Um, I have some tips. I have some ideas that we want to share and what's going on with single family home sales and so forth. So if you have a question, I can usually see some of them, most of them. Um, I would ask you to please make those comments. I would ask you to please share this video and go to my YouTube page, smartreadvice.com to get more info afterwards. So what are we talking about today? We're going to show you some slides. We're going to show you what's going on in the Hartford County market and, and with homes and really with days on market and so forth. And I'm even going to review a poem with you. And I want to actually go over this poem twice with you because, you know, I was going to name this video, Don't Just Sit Around All Day. And people are like, well, 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 maybe I should name that video, Don't Just Sit Around All Day. Hey, Doug Ball, thank you for joining us. So let me read this poem to you. And then I'm going to share it with you at the end of um, the video as well and go over some real estate Hartford County tips with you. And um, just so you know, as a reminder, as we go over these Hartford numbers, Hartford County, I can get numbers throughout the whole state of Connecticut. I can even get numbers, you know, nationwide if I really want to. But my focus is really um, Hartford, Tallinn, Wyndham, Middlesex counties and understand what's going on over here in the marketplace because we know that real estate is all about, and this is going to sound cheesy, right? But location, location, location. Today, more than ever, you need to have that local expert real estate agent. So let's um, let me go over this poem. I want to read it to you quick, and then we're going to go over these real estate stats. So this is called My Creed by Dean Alfinch, and I'm going to tell you really quick. I came across this. It was written in the 1950s. But I came across it, give or take, around 2007, 2008, and I embraced it. And um, it got me through a lot of hard times. And that's why I think it's important to share um, with us today because I want to go over some really important stats. Hey, Jaja, thank you. Hey, Christian, so good to have you um, watching this video too, buddy. How's it going? All right. So My Creed by Dean Alfinch. I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon. I seek to develop whatever talents God gave me, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dulled by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to barter incentive for a dole. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence. The thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. Stale calm of utopia. Sitting around at home all day, right? We all dreamed of um, that we wanted to do this one day, that we could just sit around at home all day and not do anything. And now look at us, look at us all right now. I will not trade freedom for beneficence nor my dignity for a handout. Again, April 23rd, 2020, all we're being promised is handouts, handouts. And some of us really need it. I, I want to know that I am compassionate to that. But we're waiting here. We're sitting around waiting for handouts. I will never cower before any earthly master nor bend to any threat. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid, to think and act myself, enjoy the benefit of my creations, and to face the world boldly and say, this, with God's help, I have done. All this is what it means to be an American. And I would tell you, even to be a human being, this is what it means, my friends. So let's, I'm going to get more into that in a little bit, but I want to go over some real estate statistics with you. And again, thank you so much for joining me. Leave me a comment. I'm going to try to take a look at as much of these as possible. 
And um, here we are. I'm going to do a little scene, uh, a little share um, screen with you. And uh, we're going to see what we can possibly make happen here, my friends. So just give me one moment. All right. So what I did is I put together some data, some statistics for you focusing on central Connecticut, giving you the local information you need. And I'm going to tell you, some of these slides that I put together are a little boring. There's not much going on, right? So here's an example. Hartford County, single family homes sold by week. So I went all the way back to January um, 2020, of course, and I looked and said, okay, by week, from January 4th week ending all the way to April 18th week ending, by week, how many single family homes have we sold in Hartford County? And you could see there's nothing unexpectedly here. I mean, it's a general increase. It's a little bit hard to do it week by week because most of the time real estate uh, companies and statistics and, and uh, the government, they don't do it by week, they do it by month. But I wanted to see, hey, you know, I'm, we've been around here for five, six weeks, seven weeks. What's going on in the marketplace? Okay, and so you can see single family homes sold by week, not anything unexpected. How about what was the average price sold by week? Okay, so we could see, you know, again, if you look at that dotted line, there's a normal price increase. I mean, really, when it comes to past springs, I mean, about I've only been doing this about 18, 19 years. So when it came to past springs, we'd be looking for getting ready for this market to really, really heat up. And of course, we're not seeing that. And we know why. Um, but there's nothing huge, huge with the data out of the ordinary. And I can tell you, before I go to this next slide, I really do focus on data. I love metrics. I spent about 18 years with two Fortune 500 companies, United Parcel Service, and then United Health Group. And let me tell you, those two companies were all about the metrics. So let's take a look at this. Wow. Here it is beginning, my friends. Please take your head out of the sand. Okay, single family homes, pending transactions by week in 2020. Okay, what's going on? What does this mean? Well, this is home. These are homes that have been um, put under deposit for that week or under deposit continue to show. Um, you know, they have a purchase and sale contract, but they're not ready to close yet. They're pending. There's still something going on for it to close. Now you could see the first couple of months were about regular where we would possibly be, but look what happened the first week of March. Isn't it funny that, um, and again, please don't get mad at me, right? But I tell what I, what I think, I know those banks, the government and the banks are one step ahead of us. And those banks know what, go, what is going on and what they need to do in order to keep their revenues flowing and in order to go to the government and ask for what they need for money. And look what happened the first week in March. It went from 16 pending transactions, boom, to 51. That's a huge jump in seven days, right? And then, of course, you know, it's going up and up to 62, down a little bit. And then, boom, two, three weeks later, we're up to 80 pending transactions in March, on March week ending. This is week ending for the total seven days, March 28th. And now, as of Friday, look where we're at, 122 pending transactions. So what does this mean to you? How is it going to help you? right? Well, really what you need to know is that that means there's going to be longer closing times. Um, it's going to take longer. And, and you know, we understand that there are some processors and underwriters and loan officers and appraisers and people working from home and people trying to get their systems up and running and understanding what's going on. But how is it going to help? How can you be most helped with this? Well, this is knowing that it's time to wake it up, right? When you're involved with, with real estate, get the skills you need, work with experienced real estate agents and loan officers, because these are people 
right, that have been through the housing crash of 2007. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, these are people that understand the um, whole idea of looking out for your client 100%, right? These are people that have the skills and the knowledge you need. So buyers, standards to get loan to get loans are increasing. I can tell you right now that the um, the it, the credit score that you need to have in order to get a loan has increased. You need in order to get a loan, you need to have a higher um, credit score. It's pretty much as simple as that. OK, you need to have a higher credit score. There's nothing else that you're going to be able to do. Right. You also need to have what you're going to need to have a. Um, better loan to um, value ratio, you're going to need to have a better debt to income ratio. These are things that are going to need to ha be happening in order for us to get loans, work on credit repair and saving. OK, so now is the time. Again, I'm not here to push my own agenda, but I can tell you that um, I do credit repair, right? Will that help you? Probably. Will that help you if I'm doing credit repair? You need to do that. You need to start saving your money. And you might be like, Rob, I don't have any money to save. I'm not sure what I need to do. Well, now's the time. And, you know, again, it might go against what some of these experts are saying, but don't let people separate you from your wallet very easily, okay? Look to what you have in the, in your wallet. Look to what you have in your bank account and make sure you're trying to make those payments and so forth that you can. But don't be so quick to just give it up, my friends, because I can tell you right now, it's gonna be a tough scenario for you. All right, so that is huge right there. Pending transactions by week, meaning what's under deposit, how long is it taking to close? Now let's go to um, the next particular um, slide that I wanted to share with you, right? And here we are, days on market. Hartford County single family home, days on market um, by week. I did zero to 30. I did 31 to 60, which is the uh, purple line on the bottom. And then I did over 60 days, which is the blue line. And so what does that really mean to you? Okay. Well, what it usually means is that the longer homes stay on the market, okay, especially if they're not priced correctly, right? Especially if there's an agent that's not necessarily skilled on what needs to be done to, to price a home, to market a home at its fullest, you could have an issue. The how only the best houses with the best prices are going to sell. Now, again, I'm not here to sound cocky or arrogant or whatever it might be, but I mean, I have my master's degree in marketing. Okay. And if the four P's don't match, you might as well forget it. And so that product, which your home has to match the price and the placement and so forth. And if it doesn't, right, if it needs work and it's priced incorrectly, if it's not getting the correct virtual tours with the best pictures, if it's not being shared everywhere, and that's something that we do at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, New England Properties, which I love my company, the technology that they offer me is incredible. Um, that's something that we do. So this is no longer the world with the days on market going up, right? This is no longer the world of, oh, um, I have my cousin. And again, some agents might get mad at me, but, oh, I have my cousin and she just got her real estate license, you know, four months ago and I'm going to try to sell my house with her. Well, you see, that's the key word, try. Because days on market is going up. Only the best homes are going to sell. And so that's something that you seriously, seriously need to think about if you're looking to buy or sell a home. Get in touch with the real estate agent that you know has that experience and knowledge. Get in touch with a mortgage person that you know has been around, has that experience and knowledge. All right. Now, that's the information that I have on Hartford County. Um, for single family homes, I thought it was really, really interesting in seeing, bam, those um, days on market going up. 
wow, those pendings are way, way up. And I think we're going to see happen even more. So I gave you some ideas of what we need to do, right? We need to make sure buyers, you get that rate lock extended. Make sure you're talking with your mortgage person and understanding what is going on. Those sellers, make sure that you're working with somebody. Understand their business and marketing plan. Understand their marketing plan for your home. What is it are they really going to do? This is no longer those days of being willy-nilly, right? I like saying that, willy-nilly. Okay, in 2008, 2009, 2010, I can tell you I was doing real estate full-time, single source of income for my, me and my triplets. Okay. And it was not, it was not easy. And we are no longer in those easy days, at least for a while, my friends. And you do not want to be that person come 4th of July. Hopefully it's going to, going to be 4th of July or maybe even Labor Day. I don't know. And you're going to be that person that hopefully you get to go to some sort of picnic or meet some, meet up with some family or friends. And what do they say? Hey, how you been? What have you been up to? And you're going to say, Eh, I've just been sitting around, you know, kind of doing some things here and there. I mean, really? So some of the tips I put together, stay positive. I'm sounding like I'm going on a rant, but I'm not. I want to help you. Stay positive. You can watch my videos at smartreadvice.com. Hopefully those will keep you positive, right? Learn some new talents today. Okay, if you're sitting at home Go learn some new talents. Today, this could be a renaissance, not only for our country, but also for the, the entire world, a renaissance of creativity, of music, of loving, of art, of design, of um, drama, uh, whatever it is that you um, are into, now is the time to get bigger and better with it, right? I met, and when I say met, I'm going to say talked on the phone, I, or Zoom, I met and talked with a few different people this week so far. One guy is telling me, oh, I'm really into graphic design, and so I'm online every day learning about that. Another guy told me, oh, you know, I always wanted to take um, real estate, and so I want to learn about your real estate class, Rob. And I told him, Hey, go to ctrealestateschool.info, learn about my real estate class. Another guy told me, I am really, really, believe it or not, thinking about going for an online class to start looking into getting my turn to be an attorney. I said, God bless you, dude. That sounds awesome. Okay. And now I'm going to say something really controversial. Don't sit around at home. What do you mean, Rob? This is what the government says. This is what we need to do. I am going to tell you something um, that's kind of hard for me to get into. So I'm not going to get too emotional about it, right? But I wake up every day knowing that what I do today, the seeds that I sow today will affect me in six weeks. And this is what you've done, my friends. You have joined me, the life of a full-time, full-service real estate broker. So if you don't do something today, in six or seven or eight weeks, you have no moolah coming in, right? You cannot just rely on the government. Get rid of it. Do it today, my friends. Get rid of that victim mentality. And so here's the controversial thing. If, and I, want, I don't want to be taken out of context. If, if, if you are healthy, if you have some skills, to be one of these essential workers, which thank God we are so we are so thankful for. You know, maybe it's transportation, maybe it's delivery, maybe it's warehouse. I know somebody that just got a job at the grocery store, and I commended them for that because you know what? You need the money. The economy is not going to just bounce back quickly. How awesome it was for such a long time, my friends, right? Until we get, I truly, truly believe, and I'm not a doctor, and I, but I do listen to a lot of people and, and watch a lot of videos and watch the news and try to stay away from the news too much. But until we get a potential vaccination, right, a strong vaccination, most likely, this thing is going to be around and we're going to be talking about it forever. 
And people are going to make reasons to not work because of that. So only if you're healthy and you can keep yourself safe and you can keep your family safe and your loved ones with safe, I would say go out and get one of those essential worker jobs because you do not want to be there six or seven and eight weeks with no money. I can tell you I've been down that road. You don't want to be there. You want to go out there and make it on your own again. So kind of just leaving things off. If you have any questions, please um, state them here. But I want to tell you a couple of things. Hey, Jeanette, thank you for joining us. Jeanette Ulrich Baker. Um, number one, don't just rely on the government. Don't adopt that victim mentality. Okay. And then lastly, there are still plenty of bargains for buyers. Believe me when I tell you this. Okay. So if you have the cash, if you have the money, if you're still able to get a mortgage, um, right now is the time to go out there and do it if you can still do it because you never know um, with these mortgage standards changing what's going to happen. And then value are still good for the sellers. Okay. Um, you still have an opportunity to sell and get that good price. Okay. If you have a home um, that you need help, we need to talk about doing virtual tours, virtual showings, um, the whole process about how we can help you sell that property with you not having to worry about that. We can do that. So what I, that's what I have to leave you with. And I want to show you one more slide. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you can um, visit me over at smartreadvice.com. And uh, let me show you the wonderful world of this last, last slide. Okay. And um, I want to read it to you just one more time because um, it touches my heart. Oh, I want to tell you every single time. Hey, Lindsay, thank you for joining us. So let me read this to you. And then I want to say, God bless you. And um, we're going to sign off. My creed, I do not choose to be a common man or woman, right? Well, I'm not going to be a woman, but you know what I'm talking about for you women that are out there listening. Hey, this is for you too. It is my right to be uncommon. I seek to develop whatever talents God gave me, not security. Okay, don't just sit around in that security of your own home and let the days go by because this is not what we were built for as human beings or even as Americans. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dulled by having the state look after me, right? That $1,200 and this unemployment and this stimulus and that stimulus, that money's going to go by quick, my friends, okay? I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. So go out there today, even when I say go out there, that might be mean go out there on Google or Yahoo or MSN or whatever website um, search engine you use and go learn something new or enhance your skills. Find a way to make money with those talents that God has given you. I refuse to barter incentive for a dole. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence nor my dignity for a handout. Where is your dignity today? Do you have that dignity? And I know today might be one of those days you're not feeling the greatest and that's okay. Maybe it's tomorrow, but don't let it always be tomorrow, okay? I will never cower before any earthly master nor bend to any threat. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid, to think and act myself, enjoy the benefit of my creations, and to face the world boldly and say, this with God's help I have done, right? All this is what it means to be an American. So that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share the video if you can. Please go to my YouTube page and subscribe, smartreadvice.com. I will be back in another day or two. Reach out for me if you're looking to buy, sell, need real estate help, just need to talk to somebody, um, just want to throw some ideas across. I'm available. And again, God bless you. Have a great day.